Mr. Martini. That's it, they're lined up, they jump away. And Naves Ash taken back at the start and also uh, pay homage is racing prominently. And Calamon it is that gains the game. Calamon just the leader from uh, in second place, Gadge running into second place. And Desert Green normally front runs, uh, in fact, uh, being held up the long way off the pace. Top guide is nearer than him as they go to the first furlong. At the back, Desert Green getting no sort of run at all. It's Calumon leading from Gadge to the rail, the inside of Pay Homage, and then we have our Commodore uh, wide in four. Mr. Martin is uh, racing in five with Hunters of Barora and top guy on the outside of that. Then Weaver Bird and Naves Ash followed by Brave Patriarch and Desert Green well out the back of this case, and they've gone for the first quarter mile. Caliman under Frankie Dottori blazing the trail. Air Commodore the outside just shading pay homage second and third. Then we have Gadge and Top Guide and Hunters of Braw and Mr. Martini, Nays Ash. Then Weaver Bird and then Desert Green. And behind Desert Green is a uh, brave patriarch. Come down past the halfway stage, starting the turn in now. Just over three to go. Caliman still just has the edge. Two in second place, Air Commodore, the white jacket giving pay homage no run. Uh, Gadge behind these. Here comes Top Guide, the bandage horse on the outside. Off the pace with a rush is Nays Ash, the white sleeve jacket. Air Commodore takes it up as they come down past the two. Air Commodore from Caliman the rail. Here comes Hunters of Aurora on the very wide outside. Desert Green's coming with a run. Also Nays Ash with every chance. Mr. Martini picks up. They're inside the final furlong. And here comes Desert Green from a long way off the pace to come and take it. Desert Green striding on, going too clear of Hunters of Aurora up towards the line. Desert Green it is. Desert Green the winner. Hunters of Aurora second. Very close for third. Mr. Martini and Dave Ash. Then Gadge, Weaver, Bird, Air Commodore, Calaman, pay homage, top guide. Is available from most bookshops, price $8.99. What happened between Mr. Duncan Matlock and myself is private and between us alone. Do you want me to beg? I'll do it. It lasted the best part of a year. If the press hadn't rumbled him, he'd still be seeing her. He's infatuated with her. His future is now in her hands. The politician's wife, next Tuesday at 10 on 4. An afternoon of Channel 4 racing in Chester begins next with Ruff Scott holding our race card. Bored! All my stars! You are about to enjoy a completely new experience. You could be right. Something hot and steamy is about to invade your life. A hot, crispy baguette smothered with cool, creamy Philadelphia. They don't come much hotter and steamier than that. You're not a typical Virgo, are you? If you're over 55, Here's a company that could insure your home for less. Call 0345 00 55 Where paying less can still bring the cover and service you need. That's 0345 00 55 Where you can claim by phone, and in emergencies they'll find you skilled people to do repairs. If you're aged over 55, call Landmark Express on 0345 00 55 to see how much you could save on home insurance. Heartburn. Get Bisodol Heartburn. Fast-acting relief plus a special ingredient for lasting protection. It acts fast and lasts. How do you define Channel 4 News? Accessible. Enlightening. Sharp. Newshounds with pedigree. <laughs> Bringing the day's events into focus. Offering a new angle on current issues with headlines at 7 and 7.30. News daily from the four corners of the globe. This is Channel 4 News. Make a point of watching it. Sunday at 8, an extraordinary new series charting how the American West was won and lost. A bitter struggle between two opposing philosophies. The Europeans, who would conquer a wilderness, and the Native Americans, longtime trustees of the land. At 9, way out west was Spencer Tracy as a man to be reckoned with. The classic Bad Day at Black Rock follows the Wild West, Sunday from 8 on 4. The Channel 4 racing team lead us by the nose over to Chester, now here on 4, headed by Bruff Scott. Channel 4 Racing, sponsored by the Daily Mirror.
Hello everyone, welcome to the oldest track with the sharpest action. They've been racing down the centuries here at Chester, but the unique tightness of the circuit set between the ancient Roman walls and the River Dee means that the TV viewer now gets in as close as a Roman charioteer. Ride with the horses here at Chester. See how fast a race can unravel. Watch how quick jockeys have to react. For the next three days, we'll be able to take you closer to the gallop than on any other course in the land. 40 miles an hour they'll be travelling. It may sound nothing compared to a motorbike, but these are live machines you're sitting on. And during the meeting, there'll be thrills aplenty amongst the hoofbeats. The Chester Vars is the big race of the day and the historic trophy on offer. A derby trial over nearly two laps of the track with four derby entrants this afternoon. That's the second of the four races we take. We had a light shower this morning, but the ground remains good to firm. Eleven go in our first, the Chiselton Maiden, and three of those are in the derby. Seven involved in the Dallam Chester Vars over a mile and a half. Derby entry Singspiel has a big chance here. And he comes, from, of course, from the Michael Stout stable who brought Shergar. 12 go in the Tote Credit Trophy over seven furlongs, and finally 10 in the Walker Smith and Way Handicap. The beauty of this track is that you're not just next to the action, you're right on top of it. And when the runners come round into this short home straight, they hit a cauldron of sound, especially if the favourites is involved in the finish. Now, to win round the minimum trip here of five furlongs, you've got to be very fast indeed. And in the first race this afternoon, we had seven very speedy two-year-olds in the traditional opener, the Lily Agnes Stakes very interesting owner that we spotted in the parade ring before the race and it was of course the england captain there he is david platt who owns number seven il doria with one of his great pals frankie de Tour. He's also got the uh, captain from sampdoria mancini there as well but the one the pundas latched onto was this one Number one, what fun. Now, Richard Hannon trains this. He's won this for the past two years with L-shaped and Germanic. Could he pull off the hat-trick here? Strong word for this one. Before you see the race, let's get the betting at the off. Simon Holt. Yes, good afternoon, Derek. What fun was the favourite? Two to one. Ildoria at four to one. On 92, Elmswood. And then on five to one, Just Lady. Hot Lips Houlihan was a seven to one chance. Secret, secret Voucher at 16 to one. And Le Sport was the 20 to one outsider. Let's join the action. Race away and very slow to strive was Elms with that lost to Melly Links at the start. Also Ildoria slow to go out. Wide Just Lady on the extreme left racing very wide indeed and fast. Secret Voucher comes through to share the pace and it's these two who just have it. By length and a half to what fun in third and then sitting for is Hot Lips Houlihan. And this uh, Just Lady is racing very wide indeed, almost a remote of the others. As they begin the turn for home, past the three furlong marker, running the rail, Secret Voucher. But Just Lady's uh, going for the shopping and she's going very, very wide indeed as they continue the turn. And this Just Lady losing any chance she had by running wide. Still, Secret Voucher has the edge. What fun is making ground. Bill Doria picks up nicely in blue as they come down the home straight. Just over a furlong to go. And uh, on through on the inside of the check colour secret voucher is just checked for room there as what fun goes on. What fun, Il Doria back in third place is the sport who says is uh, Otlips Houlihan who's staying on, racing up towards the line. What fun it is for Mick Kinane because what fun and Mick Kinane take the open here in Chester. What fun is the winner? Il Doria is second into third is Otlips Houlihan. Then came Elmswood tidy through into four. What fun was the 27th favourite in 48 running since the war to start the Chester meeting off in front. And it was the fourth on the spin after Shamanic and Risky for Richard Hannon and Lucky Parks. 5,000 to two, two and a half thousand to one. They were the bet seen for it. What fun got punters off to a cracking good start. Yes, the winner, number one, what fun, the two to one favourite. Second, number seven, Ildoria at four to one. And third, number four, Hot Lips Houlihan at seven to one. The totes, the wind tote, paid £3.10, places £1.70 and £1.90. The dual forecast, £4.80, and the computer straight forecast, the CSF, at £9.62. Seven round. Well, David Platt, you didn't score that time, but you had a lovely run in second. What do you think? Yeah, she did very, very well. Um, we're obviously delighted with the first time out here. We thought that the race might be a little bit too strong for her, but she, she's, like I said, she's delighted us. Um, she missed the break there on the turn, and like you said in your introduction there at Chester, if you do miss the break, then it's, it's a short straight. You're not going to get up there. Um, but she stayed on well towards the end. 
Now, where does the love of racing come? I know your wife is, is related to something. She's got some racing blood in her. Yeah, that's right. Um, my brother-in-law, her brother works for, for John Gosden. Um, so that it's in it from, from her side. I've always been perhaps on the other side of the fence, the gambling side of the fence, mm -hmm. um, coming down from my father. Um, so when we got together, really, the, the passion for racing just manifested itself. Um, this is the first time really that we've gone into it and said, well, let's have a little lobby, let's you know, try and buy something that, that's got a chance. And like I say, she's done very, very well there, and, you know, it's very, very encouraging. Now, can you can you get on in uh, in Italy? I mean, yeah, I presume you can't pick up Channel 4, but if you get a good tip, I mean, can you get on? Well, like I said, since I've gone out to Italy, I've stopped gambling too much. I've not been really watching the form. Yeah. Um, but I like to, to come here and, you know, have a bed at the races and enjoy the day, really. Um, and it's more enjoyable when, you're, when your horse is running. I was just saying there to one of the boys. Um, you can play in front of so many supporters and what have you um, and not be nervous, but you, you come and watch your own horse run and it, it's very, very nerve wracking. Even for you? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Especially on the home straight there. I came here not thinking I was going to get excited, but there, when, on the home straight, um, I lost it a little bit. It's a great sport. Just tell us, when did you come in and when are you going back to Italy? Yeah, we came in yesterday. Um, I'm over with the club captain, Roberto Mancini. Um, like I said, we came over yesterday. We went up to watch Blackburn versus Newcastle last night. Mm. Um, we've come down here today, and after the, we're leaving straight after the 4.10 and flying back to Genoa because we're training in the morning, so it really has been a flying visit. Good. So I've got to ask you, what does Ildoria mean, the name? Well, it comes from the... It's a shortened name, really, of, of the club, Sampdoria. Yeah. Um, you know, we wanted to call something after the club, and if you look at the, the colours, she actually runs in the colours of the club. Lovely. Well, right. um, and that's really it, you know, I mean, that's why I think the captain's come over, because there's a lot of interest in her out there as well. Smashing. Well, give our guys to everybody back in Sam Dory. Nice to see you, David. Thanks very much. Thank you. David Platt, a really classy player and a great loss, of course, to the Premiership. Now, the punters are really going for the Michael Stout horses here today. And the chest of our sink spiel put in now as low as 11 to 10 money in the offices for it. And one or two forecasts, it could be, even be odds on sink spiel. But no doubt the steamer of the day, that's in the 340 number five classic E. That's trained by Michael Stout, rumoured on the gallops on Sunday to have finished in front of sing spiel. Now, I don't pass on rumours, that's not my thing to do. But I have to say that the classic is said to have finished in front of sing spiel on the gallops. It's now seven to four from four to one classic E. In the betting here, they're going top of the head, 9-4 to four, McCook with 9-2 to two bar. That brings in Main Defender and San Martino, 5 Royal Solo and 5 Ho, Ho Express. And McCook trying to give the Swinburne Stout combination the fair third winner in the race. What a great start that would be for Michael Stout. He's got Sing Spiel and the day steamer, Classic Eater Cub. Could this be a cracking day for Michael Stout? And there's a very simple way of getting a winner. The Dalio Duo operates on this next race. Remember what you have to do. Pick two out of the first three. Two out of the first three. And when you've got that, or you think you've got that, call 0891 77911. That's 0891 77911. 100 pounds for the first person out of the hat to select two of the first three. On to our first live action now. Scheduled to start at 2.40. The Chisleton maiden stakes. There are three in the derby in this. Istabrak, Makuk and the Sangster horse Royal Solo. 11 of them all together over a mile and a quarter. Here's the list from Graham. And 20 to 1 Mick Kinane in this race. Ambidextrous is his uh, ride. Buddy Quest at 16 to 1 Paul Eddery. Barkley Bounder at 14 to 1 Richard Quinn. Heath Robinson 12 to 1 with Frankie de Torre. Ho Express is partnered by Ray Cochran. They currently trade at 5 to 1. Mr. Brack at 9 to 1 with Willie Carson, the Derby entry then. Matt Cook at 9 to 4, favourite Walter Swinburne rides. Main Offender at uh, 9 to 2 is partnered by Willie Ryan. Ross Common Lad ridden by John Reed there, 66 to 1. Royal Solo is 5 to 1 with Brent Thompson. And San Martino is a 4 to 1 chance with Michael Hills. Runners to post then for our first race, it's the Crystalton Maiden Stakes. The horses laid out here like the track for our delight watching them for us john oaksey and first john franken yeah good afternoon breath and it's a really good race course to come and get a good close look at the horses then be able to watch them on the way to the post and this is the best looking field of maidens that we've seen all season as breath already told you three of them entered in the derby and they've got absolutely perfect racing conditions here. Ray Walls, who's the head groundsman, he's been here for 34 years, has got this course in tip-top condition, absolutely as level as a billiard board, really good cushion of grass. And uh, perfect conditions, John. 
Yeah, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a joy to be here. It's my favourite flat race course anywhere, really, because you certainly feel that you're more part of the action. There is McCook, who will certainly be one of the favourites. He's uh, run just, just with promise, really, but uh, his last run at Kempton, fourth to Mines Music, um, was definitely full of promise. He, uh, is, we can see him now, and both McCook and Main Offender were chasing Mines Music in this race. Mines Music is Istiar and Ridiara. Ridiara has showed some good form since, so this is quite you can see the two of them uh, chasing the first three. McCook just came off best against Main Offender, but there wasn't much between them then, and I shouldn't think there would be now. No, both of them had stable companions running in that race and the form of uh, which has turned out well and McCook sure to give a, good, give a good account of himself. Main offender was the one that took my eye. Slightly racier type than some of these here this afternoon and that was his first run of the season at Kempton. Before that he had one run at the back end of last year at Yarmouth and uh, he ran well enough, that was only over a mile, I think this mile and a quarter round here. Have him up near to the pace and uh, I don't think he'll be too far away. Well, he was my eye catcher, main offender. It was quite difficult, I must admit, this afternoon. On the way down to the course, Ho Express, that one's got definite claims on uh, its form. And in the ring, McCook, but uh, Royal Solo, the big horse, biggest horse in the field of Peter Chappelheims, owned by Robert Sangster. He's easy to back. Let's take a look at Ho Express, a horse who's not won yet, but shown real promise twice in two maidens last year. Uh, the second of those was won by, court, won by Court of Honor, and Court of Honor hit the front two furlongs out, but just look at the distance Ho Express makes up with the white noseband. Uh, coming up now, up the centre of the course, Court of Honour has gone beyond recall, but as you'll see, Ho Express gains with every stride. He'd run a similar race in his previous outing, another maiden race. You can see, you can't call him unlucky because Court of Honour deserved his victory. Nevertheless, he did make up an awful lot of ground. And it's interesting that the uh, horse immediately in front and behind, they both run in a listed race later on this afternoon. That form's worked out well. Ian Balding's horse is just coming into form. He had a couple of good winners yesterday. San Martino, there was a big tip for this when he made his debut at Newmarket in a race that's um, turning out to look fairly smart. And uh, he finished fourth eventually. He was never really travelling all that well throughout the race, but he looked sure to have come on for the run. <coughs> Others to keep an eye out for here. Barkley Bounder really on his form there's no uh, particular reason to fancy him but uh, he looks much fitter today than i've seen him before and i should think this will be a race worth keeping on video because there'll be some decent horses come out of it five to two mac cook now and it's San Martino, the uh, no guarantee pace in the race in these, one of these maiden races. And it's San Martino, the pink cap, just spearheading Ambidextrous, who's racing wide. Macook uh, runs the red in the light blue cap, the brown colours. Barkley Bounder pulling uh, fearsomely hard for his head. I just checked uh, Ho Express there, racing down the pack. Moving smoothly on the outside is Main Offender. The back marker is Ross Common Lab, and they come past the winning line. They've got a circuit to go. And it's San Martino who leads. San Martino by uh, about a length now to, in second place, Ambidextrous. Uh, showing third and racing out wide, we have Main Offender. Matt Cook runs the rail at what looks to be a steady pace. And then we have Barkley Bounder in five. Ho Express racing six. Down the back, we have Royal Solo in seven. A length and a half back to Heath Robinson in eighth place. Buddy Quest is ninth, and the back markers are Isti Bracket, and much like a Derby horse to me at this stage, anyway. And Ross Common lad out the back. Main Offender, though, has the edge as they continue on their left handed journey down towards the halfway stage. And it's Main Offender by about a length and a half. Two in second place, San Martino, who runs the rail on the inside of Ambidextrous. Then uh, Matt Cook is in uh, fourth place. 
with Barclay Bounder racing five. Ho Express getting a little bit closer in sixth place and then uh, behind these comes Royal Solo. But our leader is uh, main offender by about a length still, uh, under half a mile to go. And it's main offender by about a length to, in second place, uh, San Martino. Then behind these we have Ambidextrous racing out wide, followed through uh, by Royal Solo, who's making good ground through on the end. There's a race starting in earnest now as they start the turn in. Just over two to go. Main offender still has it from San Martino. This Royal Solo is making giant strides through on the inside with the spotted cap. Makuk goes nowhere. Ho Express up and down in the same spot. But it's this main offender who's really keeping up the gallop as they come down the home straight down just over a furlong to go. A main offender in the starred cap here in the pink cap on the outside, San Martino. Main offender, San Martino. Don't rule out Royal Solo who's finishing with a rare flourish down the centre of the track, just hanging in a bit, but Royal Solo's come to take it now. Royal Solo is the winner from San Martino in second. Main offender is third. Matt Cooker slightly disappointing four, but in front of Heath Robinson, who stayed on nicely, then Barkley Bounder. Followed through then by Baddy Quest and Ho Express and Istibrak and Ambidestrous beat one, and that one was Ross Common Lad, and Ross Common Lad was tailed off throughout, and so the result then of this, the Christendom Maiden Stakes has gone to horse number 10, Royal Solo, a Sadler's Wells horse at 7-1, to one, who is entered in the derby. This one trained by Peter Chapel Hyam, and this big horse certainly handled these bends. Brent Thompson rode him in the sweat box this morning, uh, Brent was, but he's certainly ridden uh, Royal Solo to great effect, and this horse quickened up nicely off what seemed to be a relatively slow pace on the outside of the pack to take it from San Martino, who looked to have the edge there inside the final third on the pink cap. Main offender in the uh, star jacket, Willie Ryan, has made a lot of the running there. But this uh, Royal Solo certainly quickened up, just carrying his head a little bit to one side, but he's certainly quickened up nicely. And a very encouraging performance from a very big horse on a very tight track. And another winner at the Chester May meeting for the Robert Sangster team. And we can give you a close-up of Brent Thompson's fortunes coming towards the straight. I thought for a moment that Brent was going to go for a run on the inside. It looked for a moment as though the opening was going to come for him, but it doesn't, in fact. He pulls out instead around San Martino and Main Offender. Main Offender still looks like making all at this stage, but now, just look, Brent Thompson gets some daylight, Ask for an effort, and Royal Solo quickens really well. And I should think that Brent Tops would be pleased with the way that this horse has handled the tight turns here at Chester. And he's always sat in sat and mainstream the horse that made most of the running. He's just coming into the picture on the far side. This horse is quickened up past two useful looking recruits and won very easily. Royal Solo wins at the colossal price of seven to one. It drifted out on the course from four to one, returns seven to one, Royal Solo. The runner-up, San Martino, back down to four to one, second favourite, with main offender third. That was a five to one chance. They sent McCook off the five to two favourite, and Royal Solo is Robert Sangster's third winner in the race, running with Stony Valley in 93, also chained by Peter Chappelheim, and regimental arms for Barry Hills in 1990. And round the country, there's no doubt, at Chester, punters do lag on to Robert Sangster's horses. They always have winners at this Chester May meeting, and the bookmakers will be hit in the betting shops, no doubt about that. Royal Solo going off at Nevis, 7-1. to one. However did that happen? Quite beautifully bred by Sadler's Wells, a half-brother to Dashing Blade, Jeff Smith. Uh, Loxon's owner's uh, good horse, Dashing Blade, and another good winner called Navarzato. So he could scarcely be much better bred. It would be fascinating to hear what the plans are for him. And here from Simon Holter, the starting price and tote. Yes, John, Royal Solo, a generous 7-1 to one on the SP, but even better on the tote. 7-1 to one the winner, second number 11, San Martino at 4-1, to one, and third number 8, Main Offender at 5-1. to one. Now, the totes, the win tote paid £10.60, just over 9-1. to one. Places £2.70, £1.70 and £2.30. The jewel forecast £18.30. McCook was the 5-2 to two favourite, 11 ran. If ever there was a 
owners for Corsi's horse. That was it, Robert Sangster. Uh, that lovely freight with who's uh, Robert Sangster likes to win at Chester. I think he likes to win everywhere, but particularly at Chester. You know, I heard Jim McGrath say that before the first race, and we all left, what, 25 lengths in the stalls? Uh, so I thought I saw Jim on the stairs, and I said, that's a bad omen for us. You've had bad weeks at Chester, as well as good ones, yes? Yeah, but always come back. Now, this horse, he's been bred to win absolutely everything, both sides as well, it's cost quite a lot of money. Taking his, taking his time, he's won now, he's a derby entry, are we still playing? I doubt it, Ruff. Mm. I mean, he ran very green today, he's a big baby. Mm. Um, down the back straight, I mean, he looks as if he wouldn't be in the first yeah. seven or eight. Um, then Brent looked round coming into the straight. I thought, well, is he looking for danger or is he looking where to go? <laughs> uh, I asked him and he, he, he said I was going so easily then. Uh, very hard. I mean, I think experience counts a hell of a lot mm. of that, and, and I, I, I wouldn't consider him. And uh, so ran pretty well. He'd had uh, <clears throat> a uh, couple of runs before been second second at Newmarket in a maiden he is doesn't uh, in his runs so far this season he's been ridden along almost from the start as if he um, doesn't travel all that well in the early stages of a race interesting to see how he handles these bends he's a real laid-back character this horse if you had a look at him you could believe that he's had three runs already I think he's just about coming to himself at the moment but Clive Britton's horse is in tremendous form for the pretty Polly with Musetta at the weekend. Let's have a look at Marilinger, another horse trained in Newmarket, this one by Michael Bell. Had one run so far this year, and one, and won quite nicely in the end. That was at Lingfield on the all-weather in April. Don't expect Reasley for horses coming off the all-weather to come here and be running in group three races and this one quite a handy sort of horse shorter handle of the bends Mick Canan already one win here this afternoon he's got a draw this horse coming out of draw five sorry Mick uh, Fenton riding this horse coming out of stall five it it was a derby trial that Maralinga won, but it was the Kentucky derby trial. Uh, Linkfield was staging the nearest it could uh, to the Kentucky derby uh, around the bends and on the dirt. And there's Stefelio, who ran in that race last year in which uh, Court of Honour beat uh, Ho Express and Royal Scimitar. Stefelio was uh, some little way behind them and uh, he run quite nicely in his only run this season though behind Posidonias it was quite a valuable race at Newbury and he ran a nice race up with the leaders for quite a long way until sort of inside the last quarter mile he got a bit tired but that ought to have brought him on Colt by Be My Guest out of a survivor mouth He has the assistance, the matchless assistance, really, of Frankie Dettori. He's following Walter Swinburne on Singspiel. He's just got himself, as you can see, he's got himself a little bit on his toes as soon as he came in from being saddled. Not normally something you like to see in sort of mile and a half distance horses. Far better for them to be walking around a little bit relaxed, but maybe once they just set out onto the course, they begin to settle down. With me now is Michael Stout, the trainer of the favourite here, Singspear. Michael, apparently the horse punctured uh, the hoof. I mean, how worried are you about that? Well, that was before Sandown, you know, a while ago when he punctured the sole of his foot, mm -hmm. which got us behind schedule for the Sandown Classic trial. And um, I was pleasantly surprised the way he ran there. Mm -hmm. um, what have you done with him since then? Well, he's just had one nice bit of work. Mm -hmm. It was only, you know, ten days ago. Mm. So we're hopefully he won here as a two-year-old. He's been around the track and he's medium-sized and well-balanced, so the track should be all right for him. We're very hopeful. I was going to ask you how important.